A very good evening to our viewers. Uh, thank you for joining us today on the, the Evening Review. My name is Trevon Jabella, your host. Tonight on the show, we are joined by uh, Dr. Panduleni Itula. He is a president and chief patriot of the uh, Independent Patriots for Change, IPC. And uh, it is real to help us understand some of the concerns that he has raised recently as far as uh, some of the formations in parliament are concerned. It's always a pleasure to have you, Doc. Thank, Thank you for making time. Much, <laughs> and good evening to Namibia, too. Thank yeah, you very much. It's absolutely important that your services contribute to an understanding to the public. Otherwise, you know, we'll continue to be ignorant of our own rules. Absolutely. Yes. I think it's important that yeah. uh, rules must uh, reign supreme. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you, you had a, a party event this past weekend, and you, you raised a very pertinent issue which, if, if you are correct in your analysis, mm -hmm. is actually a very, very serious issue. Mm -hmm. And that is around the, the partnership between uh, PDM and mm -hmm. UPM in Parliament, mm -hmm. uh, you know, raising some serious issues. If, if you can sort of walk us into what you were saying in, in that regard. Right. Uh, first of all, thank you very much indeed for asking us to come and uh, ventilate these issues. Yeah. The most important thing that Namibians need to understand, and they hate it very often, is that, that we are a country governed by the rule of law. Yeah. Whatever the law says, that is what should be done. The Electoral Act of Namibia, Act 5 of 2014, is now undergoing a review process so that there is amendment, etc. And it's during that process since last year, mid last year, that the party was invited to participate as part of the stakeholders. And it's then when we had somebody standing up saying, I am blah, blah, Secretary General of UPM in coalition with PDM, a member of parliament. Yeah. And I thought, I've never seen the name UPM in the list of political parties that participated in the elections of 2019. Mm. And that was the first time that it struck me. And then we had a discussion. Now, the event that took place in 20, uh, uh, on Saturday was effectively to look at where we are since our formation and to look at where we are going and how strong is the party now and what we need to do to continue strengthening it with one purpose of getting the majority votes in the next elections coming in as well. But we needed to look at a number of issues as well and it came up that there is an issue pertaining to as stakeholders and as a registered political party our principal object according to the law it to, is to participate in and to promote democratic elections mm. it is our role there are people who are looking at the lock and standy as ipc we've got a responsibility to ensure that democracy in this country continue to be strengthened and not weakened by any means whatsoever mm -hmm. in addition to to that as having been an independent presidential candidate during the 2019 elections, I've got a locus standy to say that somebody participated in these elections who was not legitimately and properly registered as such. Yeah. Now, according to the information we've got, we actually managed to communicate when we heard about it to the ECN, uh, Mr. Muyoro, and ask him since last August to give us a copy of the agreement. He refused to give that copy of the agreement stating that it was private. And one wonders why a public document in a public institution is suddenly private and cannot be had mm -hmm. by anybody seeking to look and to understand it. And when we eventually got the hold of the document um, and is circulating on WhatsApp, we realized that we've got a real problem here. Yeah. A problem of a chimera that we don't know how it came about. Now, political parties in this country there isn't anything called a coalition in the Electoral Act. There's something called an alliance, and that comes into section 144. Mm. There are certain conditions that must be fulfilled when you enter into an agreement to contest elections as an alliance. Yeah. The law 
states that where more than one political party comes into an alliance, they still remain as independent entities. They still enter into those elections and independent entities. They still submit to the, uh, to the ECN their list of parliamentarians separate from each other. Mm -hmm. And in fact, section 144 subsection 4 uh, C um, clearly states that the person on that list submitted by the political party that is participating in the election must be a member of that political party. Yeah. Only members of that political party can be submitted by that political party. In addition to that, at subsection 5C, it says that in, uh, and that is in section 77. Yeah. In section 77, you need to read it together with section 104. It says that only members can be submitted in the list and also the authorized person, meaning the secretary general of that party, must also state a declaration that all the people that they submitted belong to that political party. Mm -hmm. And this is where the legalities of the whole thing comes. Did the secretary general of the political party that submitted the list know, was he aware that two, three members on that list did not have membership yeah. cards of that political party? Now. Um, people are claiming that they are in a coalition, they are in an alliance. There's nothing wrong with an alliance at all. But you cannot have one single political party list. And anyone entering parliament must enter parliament through their own political party list. So we've got um, Honorable, it's very, very bad to talk about people when they are not here, but it's now in the public eye, yes. that uh, Honorable Celeste uh, Becker, is a member of parliament and was also recorded in public that she was the deputy chief whip of the PDM. Mm -hmm. Now UPM is not in parliament and also the president of uh, the UPM is a member of parliament. According to the agreement that president is also the second vice president of PDM. Mm -hmm. So you've got the second, the, vice the second vice president of PDM is a UPM member and then on the list of parliamentarians, you've got members of UPM. What can you describe that other than a major of the party in all intents and purposes? Mm -hmm. Now, if there was a major, one, how did the ECN register this major yeah. of a political party? How did they get the list with all these people belonging to another political party, which they know because when you register a political party, the president and the secretary general's name is there. You should know them. So how did he register those people? And how did whoever is the authorized person who declared that list as valid declare that? Now we've got a problem here. We've got two members of parliament. In fact, when you look at the gazetted list of the PDM, Honorable Celesta Becker does not appear there. Now, you can't be in parliament unless you appear on that list. Yeah. And I think Namibians need to understand that. Our responsibility as a political party is to be absolutely honest with the electorate. Mm. And it was irresponsible for the ECN to register Honorable McVernani as a political party presidential candidate of the PDM when the, 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 the law says that if a candidate is to be registered, they appear and be identified in their own name with their political party and a symbol indicating that they belong to an alliance. Mm. The ballot papers that Namibians went to vote did not indicate that. It, it effectively suggests that uh, Honorable Venani participated in those elections inappropriately in that, that it was not indicated that he belonged to an alliance. Mm. Mm. And if at all there was an alliance. And that puts a question mark. Because if we assume and we conclude that there is a major of these political parties because the president of the other one went in here and also the political party entity is now called the PDM, not yeah. just PDM. Yeah. And also they've got one complete single list. It means that they have matched. Mm. And if they have matched, the um, uh, uh, treasury, when they are paying political parties in parliament, they don't pay UPM anything. Yeah. They don't recognize it. It doesn't exist on their list of, you know, people to be paid. It's just PDM. Mm. 
And if uh, uh, UPM is there for or members are benefiting from that, it means that these people have actually matched. Mm -hmm. And if they have matched, Section 143 comes into play, which says that when you have matched, your previous registrations and independent political entities falls away and lapses, and you need to register a new entity. We've got a chimera here. We've got a problem here. Mm -hmm. Was the PDM that participated in the elections an alliance, mm -hmm. or was it a major? Mm -hmm. If it was al an alliance, why did UPM also not register to participate? Yeah. They can't have it both ways. Yeah. They have to come clear on that. And this is not really their problem. Yeah. This is the custodian's problem. Now, people tend to think that the ECN is not the custodians of elections in this country. The ECN, in terms of Article 94B, has got the exclusive authority to conduct elections and to control elections yeah. and to guard against anything. So the outcome of the elections from the ECN is what parliament is given, is what the country is given. So the person that is responsible for that must guard against any wrongdoing and for therefore a custodian of the process mm. of democracy. And therefore I maintain that they are that. That's not significant. But what it is is this that um, Mr. Muyoro made the biggest blunder anyone responsible for our democracy ever ought to have done. Yeah. And it's probably time that we start asking His Excellency to withdraw him because yeah. that is extremely, extremely irresponsible to register as a CEO of an electoral process a party that doesn't exist, members of a political party that don't belong to that political party is participating and now serving as representative. Now. There is a concern in Article 45, all members of parliament are representatives of all the people of Namibia. Mm. So I am now being represented in you by someone who is illegitimately in that chamber. Yeah. And that cannot be taken if we believe in the rule of law. Absolutely. Yeah. Before we go for a break, yeah. uh, doctor, so given the, the circumstances that yeah. you ably articulated, um, what, what then? What must happen? Are we just lamenting? Are we calling for a particular action? Uh, knowing, of course, that elections are already next year also. What must be done? We need to understand that any illegal conduct cannot be condoned. And it doesn't matter whether elections is next year or any other year. Once you commit a criminal offense and broke the law, you know, anyone who notices that has got an obligation to make sure that a remedy is provided. Unfortunately, administrative bodies, when they make mistakes, they cannot receive their own mistakes and say, we made a mistake here, the election has already taken place. Unless an administrative decision has been put aside by a competent court of law, it stands. And we cannot allow, as a party that believes in the rule of law, something of that nature to go. We have uh, given them 60 days, that is the ECN, yeah. to pronounce itself whether it aired at law to allow a registration of a single party list belonging to the PDM and not PDM alone, yeah. and whether they actually exist as such. And if need be, we'll seek a judicial review to allow our courts who are responsible for the interpretation of our laws to tell the public, the public needs to know, mm -hmm. to tell the public whether we actually have got a chimera, a new political party, or whether we've got people in parliament that are not supposed to be there at all. Mm -hmm. No. Wonderful. Yeah. We go for a quick uh, break and then return with Dr. Itula. Welcome to Active Kids, a daily TV show that sparks creativity, learning, and fun for young minds. With exciting activities and lessons, Active Kids inspires curiosity and a love for learning. New face to the <laughs> The perfect mix of play and education. Don't miss out on the fun. Tune into Active Kids on NTV every weekday at 10 o'clock and let the adventure begin. We continue with uh, Dr. Panduleni Itula of IPC. Now, Doc, the, still on this subject before we move to the next one, ah. um, the, has 
ECN at all responded or acknowledged uh, your concerns and that perhaps they are working on some res response, response to that. I'm asking this because we also had a, an issue, you remember, with PDM uh, uh, since this past election where uh, they have gazetted particular members mm -hmm. with the help of ECN. Mm -hmm. And um, then after the elections, the, the gazetted members, mm. some of them were removed, and then new mm. people from out of nowhere were, were mm. brought in. Mm. And ECN actually went to spend public money in defending that case. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, as, as, a, as, a, as a political party that has uh, participated in several elections now and heading into elections next year, when you put all these things together, this trend of, of comical errors, you know, wh wh what comes to mind? We really can't allow and we cannot tolerate our very, very important part of our existence as a country democracy to be handled by somebody making all these errors. Mm -hmm. They have got a legal representative or a legal advisor inside the, 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 the ECN itself. Yeah. Now, I, you don't need, it's not rocket science to read and understand that Section 77, for example, says that you can only put members of your political party on this list. It's not rocket science to say that, you know, verify this. And also, if you know this is Dr. Itula, you automatically know that he belongs to this political party. Yep. If you know this is Honorable Van Veik, you know, you know that he can't be on this list of PDM. So this was deliberate. There can be no error in this. And we've got somebody that really need to resign or he needs to be sacked. Yeah. That error is a disgrace and is actually affecting lives of Namibians. Yeah, yeah. A lot of lives of Namibians. We can't leave it like that and I think that uh, the appointing authority, that is His Excellency Dr. Hack again, Gottfried Kinkop, uh, should look at it and say no, this person is inappropriate mm. and he should be removed before we even get to the next election. The integrity of the ECN is at stake here. Yeah. The integrity of his, uh, the honorable member of parliament, McHenry Venani, as leader of a political party well experienced into the laws of our country, is at stake here. Mm. How could a political party leader who knows the rules allow another political party leader to be on their political list into parliament mm. when he knows the law says only your members can be there? So this is not just ECN. Everybody involved need to tell the nation how did they get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, another thing uh, that I need, I mean, um, I don't know whether it's clearly ex ex explicitly yeah. expressed in our constitution, mm -hmm. but you read a lot about uh, our, the, the, the laws of our country. Political parties, I mean, next year, 2024, we have the presidential and national assembly elections. Yeah. And we see people participating in both um, elections. Uh, one person, mm. they are competing as a presidential candidate. Mm. And then when they lose that side, they still make it to parliament and through their party list. Uh, what does the law say there? Is it legal? Is it uh, people taking chances? Well, we've got a problem with the equality principle of our constitution. Yeah. People must be treated equal. If you are contesting as I did, as an independent presidential candidate, and somebody else representing a political party, we should be treated equal. Yeah. When I did not succeed, or be it that I was not successful in becoming the president of this beautiful country, I did not have an option to go to parliament. Yeah. Why should anybody else have an option to go to parliament? In this country, in terms of Article 1.3 of the Namibian Constitution, we've got separation of powers. Mm. You cannot seek to go into the executive, and seek to become a legislator and also a, uh, a part of the judiciary. Mm. It's not possible. In fact, our constitution makes provision that if we get a vice president taken from parliament, that vice president loses that seat. The same applies to cabinet ministers. Mm. Cabinet ministers should not be members of parliament participating in parliament, they should be ex officios of that parliament. In fact, the constitution says to attend parliament and to respond to questions. Mm. It doesn't say to participate in parliament. Now, at the same time, the separation of powers therefore allows only presidential candidate to contest the presidential candidacy. Yeah. And you cannot at the same time 
contest for parliament as well because it's separation of powers. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, in the local and regional council elections, you can only contest for local or for regional. It's explicitly stated. Mm -hmm. But in the presidential and the national assembly, it's implied. Nothing, not always, everything in law is not explicitly stated. Yeah. It's implied. And therefore, participation in political activities is subject to Article 1.3, separation of powers, which means that you go into this room, you close it. You go into this room, you close it. Mm -hmm. So in the next election, and we've put down a document that explains this in detail and making references to various jurisdictions as well. Mm -hmm. That we cannot, in a semi-presidential uh, 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 government, have something of that nature. In the United States, when you are running for president, you go for president. You don't go for Congress. Yeah. You know, whereas in South Africa, they've got a parliamentary system there. And in the United Kingdom, they've got a parliamentary system as well. The president of South Africa is elected in the parliament. Yeah. In the United Kingdom, the Prime Minister is from the leading party that has won the election. Mm -hmm. In Namibia, there is a separate election for the President and separate election for parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. They cannot be mingled. So you choose to go. So all the other political parties has to field candidate yeah. properly having followed the provisions because the law states that political parties must have open, regular, periodic elections of their office bearers. Mm. To be a presidential candidate representing that party's an office. So we will be looking very seriously that this is adhered to. Mm. And if a political party does not allow all its members to contest for the presidential candidacy, then that is not an open election, open to all its members, and that is the meaning of the law. Yeah. The rule of law in Namibia, if we do not apply it strictly, of course, there is discretion. If we don't apply it strictly, we will destroy this country and the country will uh, culminate into chaos completely. Yeah. Will, will IPC under Dr. Pandulini Tula set a precedent going forward to say that um, we are not going to see Dr. Itula on the parliamentary uh, because you have already been endorsed by your party? SA. Yeah, and uh, well, it's not a precedent. We, 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 I've been endorsed and um, following a proper election, and also because we were supposed to have a convention um, uh, last year, but because of the COVID limitations, yeah. we had to bring in the largest political uh, entity in our party to make the decision. But we went to the grassroots. Yeah. We asked every branch in our party to select a candidate, and they selected the candidate. And we had two candidates on the top, which then sub were subjected to an election. I shall not participate in the legislative contestations as I am participating in the presidential contestation. If I don't succeed here, which is very unlikely, then I will just go home and sit at home. Yeah. But that is not what the Namibian people want. The Namibian people want change, and I'm urging all of them to vote for that change. Mm -hmm. That change starts with them. We will not uh, uh, d destroy. Our principle is rule of law, and we will not destroy that rule of law. I know that it has, taking has been taking place all along, yeah. but it's time to put a stop on it in order to adhere to our own constitution. Yeah. Any responsible Namibian political leader will stand up and say, okay, if my party wants to be me to be a presidential candidate, I will comply with the rule of law yeah. and not contest the parliamentarians. Yeah. The beauty of it is this, that there will be only two candidates. Yeah. And that means that Namibians has to choose and choose to change this country to a better. Yeah, wonderful. We have one minute left, yeah. Doc, if you can summarize uh, my, my answer for this, to this question. The, the country, if you were to be elected president next year, you are walking into an uh, alliance den. We have a lot of challenges in the country at the moment. Unemployment is skyrocketing. Um, so many things uh, really shaky. Uh, what will you do to consolidate uh, a country that must now start moving forward? We anticipated that and we have been at work since 2020 by visiting a lot of ministries to determine exactly what is at wrong here. We have also gone to many of the industries. We understand what is going on. We established four strategic committees that has looked at how to revive and to inject some energy into our economy to grow our economy. We need to make sure that we look at our uh, economy in terms of our 
tax policies as well. We need to look at our youth, how employment can be created, and we look to look at our investment policies in order to make sure that Namibia becomes a destination for investments to create jobs. Yeah. And we need to look at health, education, everything is in a mess. We know it will take a while. At least we've got a program, and that program has also got 600 billion that we are able to get within one year in Namibia as soon as we take uh, office. And we are confident within about two to three years, we should be seeing drastic changes. At the moment, the repo rate is going up. The interest rate is going up. Inflation is going up. There is less money in the pockets of the people to actually go and buy food. Our students' mortgages are going up. Their car loans are going up. Personal loans are going up. And there isn't anything trying to actually see that things are getting better. Mm. Only 2015 and 2016 did we see a trade surplus. Other than that, we are going downhill. Mm. And we are aware of that. It's not going to be easy. That job as president is not going to be easy. I'll be subjected to a lot of briefing and briefing, but I've, I've got a sharp brain, I believe, to be able to go and see in between. Mm. We cannot go on to the regurgitation of Nobody should be left behind and you look at the policies and the policies are not being implemented. Fighting for the poorest of the poor and yet the poorest continue to be poor. Mm. The rhetoric of uh, corruption cannot fund us has to end. Mm. Corruption cannot be bad fellas with economic growth at all. We need to fight that very hard. Definitely. Thank so, you. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Excellent. Yeah, that was uh, tonight's show with uh, Dr. Pandolini Itula of uh, Independent Patriots for Change. Thank you for watching.